Hello and welcome to the 30k channel, a channel dedicated to games set in the Horus Heresy. And today we have Tom Stallard. Tom. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, you probably, uh, some of you hopefully, recognise my voice from the Geno52 podcast. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm a loud and gobby member of the podcast <laughs> community. Uh, I throw our Geno52 podcast out. Exactly the same style, it's a podcast aimed around the Horus Heresy. We talk hobby, we talk games, we talk fluff and all that. Uh, I'm also the proud owner of a company of, frankly, the best Legion of Starties <laughs> out there. Oh, the right. 13th Legion, Ultramarines, hashtag 13th Legion Pride. <laughs> we get out there, we'll go show the boys in blue you know, how to do it. So, yeah, this is my army and I've come up to throw some dice at some Mechanicum. Sounds good. Now, we, we've been really keen to get Ultramarines on the channel for a long time and uh, and we're lucky enough that Tom has been gracious enough to come and come and see us, so that's great news. Um, and you've brought a pretty you brought a pretty nice list, haven't you? Um, no Spartans, though. No what's, Spartans. What's going on? This is my thing. Uh, uh, this list started around being built around a Spartan. Okay. And when you sit there and go, a Spartan is great. You yep. can't deny that. Even when they up the points, it's great. Mm. It's the best way of transporting a big squad. I just didn't want to be another Spartan list. And yeah, that yeah. is nothing against anybody running Spartans. Sure. No, it is great. I just fancied something different. Yeah. I, I, and the, the, the fluff behind this army, this is the 129th chapter of the Ultramarines, they are a ragtag bunch that survived the Kalth atrocity and have been scraped together into a fighting force. <laughs> and the idea is they basically they spent their life chasing uh, traitors around the 500 worlds. So, you know, chasing Lorgar and Angron's ra uh, ragtag bunches around the 500 worlds. So it's got to be a fast and mobile force. Sure. Yeah, they're just designed to deploy quickly from orbit, uh, hit things fast and move in. And a Spartan, while it's an assault vehicle, it's quite heavy, it's quite bulky, mm -hmm. it didn't feel right. So we have the two transports, much more faster speed approach, adds a different element to the game. On paper, you know, if you sit down and you you, you neck beard it out with your with your <laughs> math hammer, that is not as good as a Spartan. Sure. I'm a turn three assault at best usually, but I just like it. The yeah. army deploys, everyone rushes out, they find the target, someone gets on the radio, Gilliman dives in in his Storm Eagle and comes <laughs> and starts hitting stuff in the face. You know, it, 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 it's what it's built around. For me, it was a narrative choice over a fluff choice. This sure. is the story of my army, this is how the army works. And, and that's exactly what the channel wants to promote. You know, we want fluffy armors in here. We, as I said before in previous in previous videos, that we don't want these massive all-conquering lists. You know, <laughs> we want fluffy lists, lists, and for me, that's what heresy is all about. So it's really nice to have something a little bit different. Loads of rhinos, a couple of flyers. Yeah. Fantastic. We love yeah. it. Yeah, heresy starts at 40 infantry. That is going to be the new <laughs> agenda for this year. If you're not running 40 infantry, I mean, David, you're not doing too badly there with. I've the thrall, 40. doing the thralls, it just feels more heresy to me when you've got waves of bodies crashing into each other. Definitely. Uh, uh, yeah, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with people who like tanks, that's cool. I'm so. not telling you what to do in your hobby, but for me, this is how heresy should feel. There should be he humans, superhumans, and <laughs> robo men smashing into each other <laughs> and just grinding each other into pace. That's what we want to see, you know. That, that's what that's what the stories in the books are. Absolutely, yeah. And we've got a really great game for you today as well. So we've got 3,000 points. Uh, we're playing the Wall of Lies mission. Uh, and we're using the Hammer and Anvil deployment type yeah. as well. So we've got the Mechanicum are deployed up in the city and the Ultramarines have deployed to try and take over the generator, essentially. Yeah, right? essentially, yeah. And... yeah. The, the Ultramarines have landed. Uh, the, the 129th company have been smashing around the 500 worlds. <laughs> they've got reports of a uh, dark Mechanicum infestation on a planet. Yep. So, as always, they've deployed rapidly from, from orbit. The front force is going to come piling in uh, uh, to find out what's going on. So we've got War Allies because we found five things that are kind of picking up on radar. We yep. don't know if it's right. We don't know what's this, what's that. So we're going to do what World from is doing, just charge into the breach and see what happens. Awesome. We're looking forward to it. Now, Tom, can you take us through your Ultramarines to see how you're going to secure this mission? Yeah, let's, let's, I'll start from the back and work forward. Please I think do. The bit that a lot of people are going to want to know about is, is this one at the front here. Sure. So Damocles Commander, I know, if you're bringing flyers, you need to make sure they're coming in. So Damocles Rhino is going to give me the buff to my reserve rolls. 
uh, Whirlwind Scorpius, which hopefully is going to chew through your thralls. <laughs> uh, Sigur and Venator for popping tanks open. Yep. Um, always nice. Uh, we have Gilliman's Fine Chariot, the Storm Eagle. <laughs> uh, it's rocking three of the Hellfire missiles. Now, we did have a chat earlier. There are two variations of this, uh, these missile profiles, yep. depending on which book you're reading. I like the Enhanced Edition. I've said on the podcast before, I love the Enhanced Editions. However, the Enhanced Editions have them listed as Strength 8 AP3 Ordnance, yes. which would mean I could only fire one missile a turn. Now, if you get the PDF version, or if you actually get the physical red book itself, they list them as Strength 8 AP3 Sunder. And generally, what I found is the community, that's the way people are running them. Sure. So we've agreed, we've had a chat, and we, we're going we're gonna to run them as Strength 8 AP3 Sunder, uh, one use only. So I've got four missiles on there, heavy bolts on the front, and the two large blast missiles at the top there. Cool. Hopefully going to uh, pan through some thralls as well. Uh, three identical tact squads. They're veteran tactical squads. Uh, I'm running Pride of the Legion, as I always do. They're all kitted out identically. They're all marksmen, so they get sniper on all their attacks. And they're uh, also um, mounted in rhinos. So three rhinos, identically mounted, just the multi-melters on the front sure. there. Uh, the sergeants are all equipped the same as well, so we've got the ven uh, the Vexella on the sergeant and a nice power fist, so we'll hopefully punch through some AP2 as well. Mm -hmm. So they're all rocking. Um, we'll probably outflank all of them, we'll throw them out onto oh, the side oh, and, and check them in. We've got the Damocles, we've got two up coming in. Um, I have had some problems with that before, where I've got nothing on the table because <laughs> half my army's in reserve, and I'm suddenly going, I've got two quad morts and a dreadnought <laughs> to survive turn one, uh, so I can shoot myself in the foot. But I love the idea of you know assault on all fronts. It's a tactical assault. Everything's coming in from everywhere. We've got ten veteran, uh, sorry, ten tactical sport marines, all rocking mounted guns in the Dread Claw. That is my first turn punch. They That's are a suicide horrible. squad. Yeah, um, they have. Uh, pretty, their, their reputation is a bit indifferent. Three games they've dropped in, they failed to kill anything. Then they dropped in and took a Warhound Titan down in one game, yeah. in one go. So they, they they almost got scrapped. Now they're back in the list. Um, we also got three individual units of quad mortars. So they're taking the separate units. That is quite a nice tactic, um, but it's mainly because of Pride of the Legion. One of the drawbacks with Pride of the Legion is you have to take more units with the Legion of Astartes rule than without it. Sure. So to fit all my tanks and my flyers in, I need to make sure I've got plenty of Legion of Astartes. That gives me one, two, three Legion of Astartes units there, rather than one unit. So I can break them up and I can. Um, uh, it gives me extra options then. We've got the Dorado Dreadnought at the back there. Yep. So uh, twin, uh, not twin linked, I've been calling them twin linked for the last few weeks and they're not. Auto cannon battery on them, they are there four go. shots, and I keep going, I keep going, they're twin link. No, they're not twin link, they are twin link. It is a bit odd, you've got two guns, but they're not twin link, but it's four shots, so there's some logic we'll in take there. It. Heavy bolters underneath, and the uh, Elios pattern missile launcher on the top, that's quite nice because that fires at a different target. Three strength eight, AP three shots with the pinning special rule. Quite a nice thing to have on the top there. It's quite handy, especially as it hits um, vehicles on the side armor yeah, as well. Yeah, really good. It's quite cheeky. Uh, so that's the core of the army. Then riding in my Storm Eagle is Gilliman and his boyfriends. So we have obviously the Primarch himself. We have our chaplain on the side there. He's equipped with a Crozius, so he's just got a massive axe for taking heads. We've got our standard line apothecary, because nicely, because Gilliman's in artificer armour, not Terminator armour, yeah, yeah. and Suzerain are in artificer armour, I can put a standard apothecary in. I don't have to put a Primus Medicare in, because he can join any infantry unit as long yep. as they're not Demon and Terminator. Nice, 55 points for feel no pain instead of 150 points. Not a bad thing there. Five Suzerain around there. Now they are a lovely unit. They all come with boarding shields, artificer armour, and they all have the Ultramarine's Legantine Axe. That's a bit of a beast. Strength as user, AP2. Hits at initiative, mm. which is fantastic. Really so good. I'm in there at initiative four with AP2. Um, the other great thing about it, any rolls of six to hit will give me an instant wound. When you pair that up with a chaplain on the charge as well, oh, yeah. I'm re-rolling my misses. It's really <laughs> and good. And I can scrape some extra sixes out of there. I, they have been known to kill squads without having to roll to wound. <laughs> oh, there's five sixes in that roll. Right, one, two, three, four, five. Goodbye, thank you very much. So they are they are quite brutal on the charge. Yeah. Gilliman himself, he is a bit of a beast. We've been having a chat earlier about uh, explaining to David exactly what he did. And when he said to me, what rules did you come with? I went, how long have we got? Yeah, so few. Gilliman, there are a lot of rules in here. I'm going to cover quite a few of them because some of them won't come up. There are things like re-rolling failed, deny the witch tests. It's not going to come up. Sure. Mainly, his big rule is he can give a unit in a uh, force organization slot a special rule. One, uh, one of three, either implacable advance, tank hunter, 
or uh, interceptor. So mm -hmm. there's lots of different variations in there. So what I'm going to do for this army is I'm going to give my melter support squad tank hunter. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? So <laughs> there are 10 melter guns with tank hunter, just because, you know. I, what you'll probably see from this video is, if you say I need to roll three ones to fail that, I'll roll three ones. So I need as many re-rolls as I can. That's good. So we get up there. Uh, Gilliman also gives plus one leadership to everybody in my army. Mm -hmm. Uh, this army is about as close to having and they shall know no fear as you can get it in Heresy, I found. My veteran squads, the veteran sergeant comes with leadership 9. That is then buffed to leadership 10. Yes, good. So you're leadership 10 with a vex setter, there's a re-roll on that as well. Yep. So you've got leadership 10 re-rolling. It's a pretty good chance. I found it's quite hard to get my units to break away, but that's saying now you're going to sweep every unit I've got on the table. It's <laughs> cross. So Gilliman himself, he comes with a two-shot uh, assault two strength eight uh, strength six sorry AP three rending bolt pistol mm. which is always hilarious just to Good. pick a few people off on the charge it's an eighteen inch pistol as well uh, so it's a bit of a longer pistol uh, he comes with a power sword uh, which is a, actually a strength one AP two melee shred. Um, power sword, which also has the murderous strike special rule. So mm. any sixes to wound will be instant death. Has Scoria got Eternal Warrior? He has. Ah, oh, damn it. Thank God. There we go. So we, that might stop me. That, that surprised a few people's play tools before when it's only strength seven, but oh yes, instant death. There's one instant death. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> but if that wasn't enough, he comes with a strength 10 AP1 power fist as mm. well. And that is fixed at strength 10 as well, which is great because it can never be buffed. Um, that is a tank destroyer. He's punched his way through quite a few things. Uh, those of you that listen to my report from Traitor's Rage will know that he punched his way through a glaive. <laughs> so it is quite it is quite good fun, that. So Gilliman himself, uh, his armour as well, he comes with a two-up armour. Yep. He comes up with a four-up invulnerable, but I can re-roll one failed invulnerable per phase. So if you shoot at him, I can re-roll one. If you then charge him, I can re-roll one in the assault phase as well. That's good. It's quite handy. It saved my skin once or twice. Mm. Um, I will put the challenge out there again, David. This is my favourite challenge. Gilliman has been killed once now. <laughs> it took an entire Sons of Horus army, and Jake, if you're watching, fair play, mate. I shook your hand when you took three wounds off him. I shook your hand when you killed him. He took a full 10-man plasma support squad in the face. Um, they killed his bodyguard off, and he took 10, 10 rapid-fire plasma guns Ooh. in the face. He is a bit of a beast. Yeah, yeah. He is a bit of a beast, and, uh, and he brings a lot to the army as well, yeah. as he should do. You know, I'd be happy if he had the army buffs, given him the fact that he is, you know, he's, he's five or six attacks on the charge. Sure. You can split between a power sword to take out bodyguards or a power fist to hit tanks. Mm. He really gives you some nice options in there. So. Yeah, that is the 129th chapter of the Ultramarines. Oh, and what a beast it is, you know. And I had to design my list this morning. I hadn't seen Tom's army, so I did just do it off my, my own memory. But hopefully we can do something. So I've gone with Legio Cybernetica Cohort, led by Scoria. We, you know, my army is very, very similar on the channel. I've done a few three or four games now, so you're probably quite familiar with it. Uh, but I'll start from the top. Scoria. He's flanked by two Majos Dominus, each armed with a Machinator Array. That's all the upgrades I've given him. I've got two 20-man squads of Thralls, uh, and they've just been given right of pure thought, so they are fearless. So hopefully, maybe I can tie uh, Gilman up and his um, Scizoran. You never know. That might be quite nice. I've got two squads of Castellax, each with four models in each. Um, one with Mauler Bolt Cannons and one with Dark Fire and Enhanced Targeting Array. So that's the real meat of my army. But you know, you've got instant death, you've got lots of barrages, <laughs> lots of AP3, yeah. those axes on those scissor and are going to... They're going to chop through. It, 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 it's. I've come up against Castlax once or twice and you just keep firing at them and they keep going, yeah, yeah it's alright, i got three wounds on it, i got three wounds on it. Four wounds. Four, four wounds on it, four wounds on it. Uh, see, that's just filthy robo man. So was it, we, we might be okay with it, we might not, we'll see. Uh, and then each of the tech thralls, uh, sorry, the thralls rather, have got to two uh, Trios armoured conveyors, both with blessed, auto simulacra and extra armour, so they're, they're quite nice. I've gone with two Thanatars with enhanced targeting arrays and the plasma water, so strength A, AP2, uh, minus one cover, reroll successive cover saves, so that might help maybe. I've lost my suzerain to one of them before they got, they got <laughs> melted in a plasma wave. We like the sound of that. And then we have three Volterax, so a new unit. I've used them once in previous games. They they do all right. They're really good with vehicles, and you've yeah, got quite a, a lot few of vehicles. vehicles. Um, I generally put them on the board rather than keep them in reserve and then fly on. So they'll probably start as a jump once creature and then maybe fly in the first or second turn. I haven't decided yet. But uh, so the, the great thing about these is they've got a three shot haywire weapon, which is brilliant, which can be double shotted via cybernetic cohort. Sorry, excuse me, by um, 
Cyber Thirty. Cyber Thirty. I don't even know my own rug. <laughs> By Cyber I've, Thirty. I've come on the wrong end of that one twice as well. So yeah. yeah, I know that one. So potentially a six-shot haywire per turn, which is nice. And then for infantry, they've just got um, two missile launchers, strength five, AP five, twin links, two shots. So four blasts per per one. And then if you double shot them. Eight blasts <laughs> per guy. So why not? Yeah, you know, it might as well force saves all the time. <laughs> but uh, one of the key rules for cybernetic cohort, which I'm sure you're aware of, is that my cyber third G range is increased from 12 to 24 inches, which is fantastic news. And if Tom's lucky enough to kill all three of my HQ, then you will score an additional D3 victory point. So. I mentioned earlier I'm running Pride of the Legion as well. Um, one of the drawbacks of Pride of the Legion is if you kill all three of these tax squads, yep. I give up two victory points. So ah. Between Gilliman uh, and the Ultramarines rules and that, I can potentially give away five victory points if I right. if I get a battering. So I do have to think about things sometimes, which I tend to forget. I charge my tax marines in everywhere and go, oh, hang on, I've lost two victory points for that as well. But... You know, we'll see how that goes. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. But I think you'll agree we've got two lovely looking armies. We've got 3K of goodness. We've got an awesome board. I think we're ready, aren't we? I think we're ready. Let's go, let's go smash some robo men into some supermen. I look forward to it. See you soon. Right, here we are guys, we are deployed, we're raring to go. The ultramarines are crashing on the rocks of the uh, of the defence wall of the Mechanicum there. Tom, I think it's going to be a great game. Should be good fun, let's see if you can seize the initiative. Thank you very much, yeah. So the key thing about this is, I need a six to seize, but then because of... Gilliman. Yes, I have to re-roll my seize, so I need two sixes. <laughs> um, I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll give it a whirl. Oh, oh. So we'll start again. No, and that's it. That's it. So don't get to seize. So uh, Ultramarines, turn one. Let's go and get some dread calls <laughs> then. <laughs> So that was Ultramarines turn one movement. Um, the Dread Claws come in, uh, dropped out 10 tactical support marines with the mounted guns, uh, hopefully going to take out a Thanatar. Uh, the only other thing that's moved is the Venator that's come round the rock there. It's hopefully going to draw a bead on those Volterax hiding in that building and will hopefully do some damage to them. Okay, so we're going to start Ultramarines turn one shooting. First thing we're going to fire is those 10 mounted guns into the Thanator, hopefully blow up a Thanator. So, um, hitting on threes, wounding on fours. So we'll, let's do some hits first then. A uh, couple of misses in there then, so we'll get rid of those misses. Uh, leaves us six hits. So, wounds. One cock dice. And... Three with four wounds. So the Ultramarine Melta Squad have scored four wounds against the Thanator. Uh, so I need my five up in vulnerable save to keep him alive. Oh, and I don't roll a single five. So the Thanator has died, but uh, he may explode on a six, which he doesn't. So my Damocles has used its focus bombardment. I've uh, fired a big shot into the Castellax stacked up in the tower there. Uh, however, unfortunately, it's scattered eight inches towards the corner there. Um, it's clipped the Triaros, but it's also clipped two of the Castellax at the front there. Uh, unfortunately, the Triaros has got a flare shield on the front of it, and being a barrage weapon, we take it from the centre. So I'm minus two on the strength for that. So I'm strength six, um, but the uh, Focus Bombardment has a Lance special rule, so that makes the front armour 12. So I can still glance it on a six. Uh, it's ordnance as well, so I'm going to roll two dice, looking for a six on one of them. No dice. No good. So toughness 7 on the Castellax, to strength 8 on the uh, Orbital Barrage, so we are looking for 3s to wound at AP3, 2 hit. 1 wound. Okay. And now, now the uh, Invulnerable save from the Castellax is a 5 up, which we fail, so the Castellax takes 1 wound. 
Right, so next shot then, we're going to take the Venator, is going to take a pot shot at the uh, Volterax there. Uh, they are in jetpack mode, so they're not flying, so I'm hitting them on my full BS. So I'm hitting on threes, two shots. So two hits. Now with strength 10, they are effectively toughness seven because they've got a flare shield at the front there, toughness six minus one to my strength. So I'm still wounding on two so because I'm strength 10 AP one. Uh, so let's see if we can do some wounds to one. Two wounds. Okay, so the Volterax are behind the building and they need a four up cover save. So, oh, it's a bit cocked, we'll re-roll <laughs> that one. And that's a foul, so one wound out, out on the Volterax. So next up, the Dorado Dreadnought's gonna fire into the last remaining Thanatar. We're gonna start with the auto cannon. so four shots, ballistic skill five, so hitting on twos. Uh, one miss. Okay, uh, strength seven, toughness eight. So we're gonna be wounding on fives. Mm -hmm. AP four, so you are gonna get your armor saves. Ooh. Three wounds. Uh, it's fives, wounding on fives. Wounding on fives, sorry, so one wound. Two wounds. Two wounds? Two wounds, two wounds. So I need two armor, which I pass both. Fine. Double. So next we're gonna do the Alios missiles on the top. Now these can normally fire at a different target, but I'm not, I'm gonna fire this straight in. Uh, so these are strength eight AP three. So again, twos to hit. Three hits, and our strength eight, toughness eight, uh, toughness seven, sorry, no, That's toughness eight. eight. So fours to wound, but AP three this time. Look at that, terrible. So no wounds there. So first of the quad mortars is gonna fire into Scoria. Let's see if we can take some Robo Man's face off with some shatter shells. So hitting on threes, four shots. Uh, that's better, three hits. Now we're strength eight against the majority toughness seven. So we're wounding on, wounding on threes, three wounds. Okay, so Scoria has a two up armor save. And we are, oh no, we take one wound, but he also has feel no pain on a five up, which we fail, so Scoria takes a wound. So that's the end of my uh, turn one, the Ultramarines turn one. Uh, what I should have mentioned at the end of the movement phase is the Dorado is elected to stay still, so he's using his targeting system, so he now has Skyfire for the next turn. Um, the last thing I did was fire the last two quad mortars into the Thrall unit down here. Uh, we've, they've taken a bit of a beating, and um, I've killed quite a few Thralls off. So overall, that was quite an effective turn. Um, I had quite a good shooting phase. I got my uh, Dreadclaw in where I needed it to. Uh, gonna try and weather the storm now, the Mechanicum's retaliation, and then hopefully bring some reinforcements in in turn two. Mechanicum, turn one, movement. I was a bit disappointed in losing the Thanatai in the previous turn, the uh, first turn of the Ultramarines to the uh, to the Melter Squad, but I think it was inevitable that I was going to use lose a unit, but but that's okay. So the the Thrals that were mauled by the uh, Quad Fire, they um, they've just consolidated onto the objective. You know, it's all about objectives at the end of this game. Uh, the Trios has moved forward just tentatively. Uh, the Thanatai stays where it is, as has the Castlax with Dark Fire. Uh, the Majos Dominus there that was attached to the uh, Thanatar has reattached now to the other Thanatar. Uh, the Trios, which is empty, is doing nothing. Uh, Scoria has split off, and he's going to make a decision whether he's going to go into the uh, the Assault Claw drop pod or whether he's going to go into the Melter Squad. But the Castlax with Mauler Bolt Cannons are positioning to wipe out the Melter Squad in combat. Um, other than that, the Volterax have just shot forward. They're now in flying mode. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about the uh, Dorito Dreadnought, but I think I'm just going to have to try and tank his wounds coming in, and we'll try and destroy the Scorpius and the uh, the Sakaar and Venator this turn. Mechanicum shooting phase turn one. I'm going to start with a Cyberthergy test from Scoria, and he's going to do right of destruction on the Volterax there. So he's going to try and double shot his uh, his Haywire weapon. It's a leadership test less one, so uh, I need a nine or less, which I pass, which is great news because score is leadership 10. So we have uh, six shots now from the Volterax. Now these are hitting on threes. Great, so we hit with five, which is fantastic news. And it's just a haywire attack, so I need twos to glance and six to pen, and the Venator has three hull points. 
So that's fantastic. So we've caused four hole points and the Veneta is dead. So that was a good result with the uh, Voltrax on the Veneta. Uh, so what we're going to do now is going to shoot the other Voltrax at the Scorpius. Unfortunately, I'm out of cyber third year range and I can't double shot this one. So I've just got three shots. I need these all to hit and all to glance to peel the Scorpius off the board. So here we go. Threes to hit. Oh, so I missed with one, which is a real shame. And now I need twos to glance. Two to five glance, six pen. So we caused two glance. So the Scorpius has lost two hole points and is still in the game. Next up, the Thanatar targeted the quad mortar and the barrage template covered the quad mortar and the Scorpius. I really want to get rid of the Scorpius gone. But unfortunately, I scattered 12, reduced it by ballistic skill 5, and I just clipped the back end of the Scorpius, which is great news. So I've got uh, side armor is 12. It's two dice to pick the highest, strength 8. I need four to glance, five to pen. Oh, and he rolls a four and a one. What a shame. Scorio is going to take a shot at the Dreadcore drop pod that drops right in front of him. Uh, he's got an Infernus pistol in his machinator ray, so he's got a Blizzard Skill 5 hitting on twos, which he hits, fantastic. And it's Strength 8 Armor Bane. Uh, Tom has elected to jink, the Ultraman player has elected to jink. And that is a Penetrate, which is fantastic news. So, Tom, one, do you jink? 1 4 up jink. Jink. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, off camera, we shot the two Trios armor conveyors into the Dreadcore drop pod just to try and clear it out. It is a death toll game as well, so I get victory points. Uh, and one of the great results was the um, Caslax with Darkfire Cannon shot their Darkfire Lances into the Quad Mortar, killed the Quad Mortar and a crew member, and there's one crew member left, which is a great result. We shall now go on to the assault phase. <laughs> As you can see there, there's no Ultramarines armed with melted guns, which is great news for me. The Castellacs charged through the building. I didn't suffer any wounds on Overwatch. And then we smashed into the Ultramarines with 16 Strength 6 AP2 wounds and, uh, and wiped the squad, which was fantastic. So next up we have Scoria. He's using his Voidian Scepter. He's got five attacks on the charge. and He's gone into the Dreadclaw. All I need to do is hit, and all of those hits are automatic glances. So I need threes to hit, and that causes glances. So, so we've done really well, we caused three hits, uh, and they're all glances, and that's the Dreadclaw drop pod gone. The only thing left to do now at the end of my turn is to roll Scoria's It Will Not Die, and I get a wound back on a 5+, plus, which I don't get, but other than that, it was a good turn. So Ultramarine's uh, movement turn two, uh, I managed to roll some reserve rolls, I managed to get my Storm Eagle in, which has come flying up uh, the table straight down Scoria's throat. I've also had two rhinos come on, they've both outflanked on this side. The one's come on there and the guys have stayed in there and the other one has come in, skidded to a halt in the building there and immobilised itself on the Shattered Aquila uh, and everybody's bailed out there to uh, start firing their bolt guns and stuff. So let's go on to some shooting then. Right, Ultramarine's turn two shooting. We're going to start off by firing the four Hellstrike missiles on the uh, Storm Eagle straight into Scoria's face. So I am hitting on threes. So one miss. I am wounding on twos. So that is three wounds at AP2. Right, so Scoria has a three up in vulnerable. So here we go. So I fail one, but I get feel no pain five up. And he is fine. So everybody's favourite pencil mounted multi-melter on the Rhino is going to fire into Scoria. It's important to fire the multi-melter first because then the two guys hanging out the roof uh, with our interlocking tactics are going to get re-rolls of one to wound with their bolt gun fire. So threes to hit with the Rhino multi-melter. Hits. Twos to wound. One more wound on Scoria, AP1. Oh, Scoria, three up, invulnerable. Oh, whoa. Oh. That's fine, it's wrong. four, it's good, he's <laughs> saved. So then we'll fire the bolt guns into him. So we are looking for threes again. So one miss. Now because they're sniper, they are going to wound on fours with sixes being AP2. So just the one wound with no AP on that. Okay, so Scoria has a two up armor save and he passes. Yeah, so the veterans have piled out their Rhino, they fired their sniper bolters into um, the Magos and his Thanatar. I killed the Magos dead, I put a wound on the Thanatar with all the rending uh, sniper bolt guns there. So we're going to move on and the, again, everybody's favourite pintle mounted multi-melters are going to fire into the Triaros. So I need a two to hit it, a three to hit it, sorry. Hit, 
and side armor 12. 12. So strength eight, two to pen. So that is a pen. Uh, then we shall be plus two on the damage table. Four, five, six. It is a mobilized and it takes a hold point. So next we're going to fire the Dorado. It stays still in the last turn, so it's got Skyfire. It's going to fire into the Volterax here. We're going to go with the assault cannons first, uh, sorry, the auto cannons first. So two's to hit. Um, so one miss. And then we need threes to wound. Sorry, fours to wound because of the flare shield. So we have three wounds at AP4. Cool. I, I'm not going to jink, uh, so I'm just going to take it on my armor save. So it's three up. Oh jeez, I take two wounds. So now I need to take a grounding check. So on a on a three plus I'm okay, but on a one to two I fall to the ground and I'm okay this time. So next up is the heavy bolters. Uh, again, twos to hit, uh, twin linked. Oh, look at that, we needed that twin link, didn't we? So that's all hit, three hits. Uh, now they're only strength five, so they're going to be sixes to wound. Two wounds, AP five. Well, I certainly didn't expect that. So I need three ups. Uh, I failed to. Um, he's lost his last wound, so he is dead regardless of the grounding check or whatever. So that Voltrax is blasted out of the sky. So as we took that Voltrax out, which I wasn't expecting, I'm going to use the Alios missile launcher. Now, because I'm in open ground, I can fire at a different target. So I'm going to fire at the other Voltrax. This is strength A, AP3. So two's to hit again. All hit. And then I'm... Threes to wound. I've jinked one of the attacks coming in, uh, but I've taken two wounds. So the Voltrax has one wound left, and I now need to take a grounding check, so I need a three up. Oh, so he takes a grounding check, and I believe he just takes an automatic wound. He dives to the ground and smashes onto the floor, and he is dead. So the Drado earned its points. Uh, the assault cannon, uh, sorry, the auto cannons and the heavy bolters took down the first Volterax. Uh, and then with the rules for the Alios missile launch, I was able to fire at the other Volterax and it took it down as well. Uh, took two wounds and it took a grounding check and smashed into the ground and died. Hooray, Volterax go down to Dorados. Uh, then the quad mortars fired. The first one fired some Sunder shells into the Castellax. Uh, didn't do anything really, there, there was a bit of ineffective shooting. Uh, the second quad mortar again fired its frag shells into the thralls and they are being whittled down now to hopefully not a scoring force. Uh, then I fired my Scorpus, um, uh, fired into the Castellax with the Maulers again, uh, not very effective in there. Uh, the Scorpus has been a big threat for David but it hasn't actually killed a lot yet. So overall, good second turn. Uh, Dorado took out those Volterax, that was worrying me with the amount of armour I've got. Gilliman's in, ready to fight Scoria. Um, let's see what goes on then with the Mechanicum turn two. Mechanicum turn two, movement. Uh, I've suffered a few casualties in the last turn. The Volterax in particular was a bit of a blow, but uh, you know uh, the Ultramarines did a fantastic job with their Dorito just mincing them out of the sky, which is a real shame. I had hoped that they were going to swoop across the board, double shot the other one, and take out that um, that Storm Eagle, but unfortunately it didn't quite happen for me. Uh, I did roll my reserves and my other Voltrax didn't come on, so that was a real shame. Uh, I've In my movement phase, I've joined Scoria up to the Castlax unit and made a bit of an extended line. I can't quite decide what to do, but I'm anticipating a massive charge from the Suzerain, if I pronounce that correctly, and, uh, and Gilman uh, in the next turn. Uh, the Dark Fire are going to draw a B down the battlefield and maybe take out some quad mortars, uh, and the Thanatar will do the same. Other than that, I'm just trying to shore up my deployment zone and try and take a uh, 10 man tack unit off the board this turn. So we'll see how we go. Combined firepower from the two Trios armoured conveyors and the Castellax unit with Molobolt cannons have reduced the tactical squad down to eight members. Uh, they passed their pinning checks and they passed their brake tests so they're standing firm in the face of uh, the robots. The Thanatar levelled its helix plasma mortar at the quad mortar, hit the quad mortar, caused a wound, but then also clipped the Scorpus, which was fantastic news, and we penetrated it uh and destroyed it so for me mechanic and player that is fantastic news next up the castlax with dark fire cannon are going to try and take the storm eagle down or at least get it to jink or maybe we might get a lucky shot we're not sure but i i've rolled my to hit i only got one 
gets hot, which I pa which I passed rather, and I got three sixes. Uh, so I've hit the Storm Eagle three times, which is fantastic. Now, uh, the Ultraman player has elected to jink, but with Enhanced Target Array, it's a minus one, so it's a five-up jink. The Castellax with Dark Fire really want to take out the Storm Eagle coming towards it with the uh, Scizorin and, uh, and Gilman. Uh, they've aimed their lances up. They've hit three times on sixes, which is fantastic news. Uh, the Ultramarines have elected to jink, uh, but with the Enhanced Target Array, they'll get a minus one to the jink, so they're getting a five up. But first of all, of course, I need to glance and pen. So they are lance, strength seven lance. I need a five or six, five to, six, five to glance, six to pen. And we have two pens, which is fantastic. So, Tom, we need a two, two five, five ups. ups. Or one oh. goes through, one survives. So, so roll one. on the damage table. Okay, it's AP2, so this is plus one. Oh! And so he's snap firing, which he was doing anyway, but he has taken a whole point. It was worth a gamble. Mechanicum turned to assault phase. Uh, not a bad assault phase. If anything, it, I'm, I just wanted to reposition myself to, to, to receive the charge from uh, Gilliman next turn. However, in the shooting phase, I did do some Cyberthurgy and I gained a wound back on my Thanatar. So the Thanatar is back up to full strength, which is great. Uh, the Castlax and Scoria charged the Tac Marines. Uh, Scoria issued a challenge and wiped the squad out with his Voidian Scepter, which was great news. Uh, and the Castlax didn't even get to strike, so that's not bad. So now, all I'm doing now is bracing myself for this charge from, from Gilman next turn. Um, you know, Tom's a really strong player, so we'll see what he comes up with. But uh, here we go into the Ultramarines. So Ultramarines turn three movement. Um, my final Rhino has come on over there. It's popped up on the other side to outflank everybody else over there. It's just come on uh, with its squad on. Uh, more importantly, Gilliman has descended from the heavens uh, on roaring pinions. He's come charging out of his uh, Storm Eagle, ready to take on Scoria. Um, the other guy, the quad mortar guy at the back there is just running hidden behind a rock there to try and deny some victory points. But apart from that, there's just a bit of shuffling around. So let's go on to Ultramarine shooting. So shooting phase, turn three for the Ultramarines. The Rhino that's come on, um, bolt guns out the roof and the multi-melter and the bolter on the Rhino have taken down the thralls, down to one guy left there. Um, we then moved on and the multi-melter on the immobilised Rhino took a whole point off the Triaros. And then amazingly, two good dudes got out the other Rhino down there, uh, the Ultramarines Rhino down there, fired their bolters into the Castellax and actually took two wounds off the front Castellax there, which was quite nice with some uh, sniper bolters there. So we're going to move on, we're going to go back to the faithful Dorado Dreadnought and blast some shots into this Triaros in the middle here then. So the Dredo's fired, uh, hit the Triaros, uh, managed to take a whole point off it with all its uh, weapons and has shaken it, so it's snap firing. The two quad mortars then fired their frag shells into the Darkfire Castellax on the top there and did some wounds. Uh, the Storm Eagle also had a crack with its missile launchers. Because it's got a machine spirit, even though it's jinked, I can still fire one weapon at full ballistic skill. So I fired the blast weapons in there and did a, another wound on them. So uh, Gilliman's suzerain squad have fired their bolt pistols in. They managed to take a wound off Scoria, which is great. Now Gilliman's going to fire his uh, gun. It's his special uh, Arbiter gun. It's an Assault 2 uh, Strength 6 AP3 with rending uh, bolt gun, basically. So I'm going to shoot. I'm a BS6, so I'm hitting on twos, re-rolling, uh, but the re-roll is six. So they all hit. So it's Strength 6 uh, against your toughness. Uh, seven, so I'm on fives to wound, but sixes will be AP two. Uh, so one wound. Okay, Scoria has a two up armor save. Let's hope I don't roll a one like I did in the last one from a bolter. No, we're good. He's good. So end of Ultramarines turn three shooting. Uh, a relatively good shooting phase there. I killed some things. I didn't do as much damage as I'd like to. I'd like to take some more wounds off those Darkfire Castellax. They're worrying me. Uh, Gilliman's uh, shots were mainly to prepare for the charge. Let's just soften up the target before we go in. Uh, so we're going to move into Ultramarine's turn three assault phase. Mm -hmm. 
Ultramarine's Assault turn three. Um, Gilliman has charged. He has made his heroic charge into Scoria. He has also called a challenge out, which Scoria has stepped up to take the fight. Um, we've been through and just worked out what's going to happen at what step, and it's going to start with Scoria attacking at initiative five. Now, Gilliman is initiative six, but I've elected to use the Power Fist, which drops into initiative one. I'm hoping to take his Feel No Pain away by doubling him out with strength. Uh, take that one, you know, he's got a three up in run, hopefully going to stop him getting extra cheeky saves on there as well. Um, my chaplain is running with the Crozius as well, which is unwieldy, so that puts him down to initiative step one as well. So we're going to have Scoria hit first, then the Suzerain are going to hit, then the Castellax are going to hit, then I'm going to hit with the chaplain and Gilliman, and uh, Scoria also gets his uh, initiative one attacks as well. So we're going to go through those dice rolls and see, see who comes out at the end. Here we are. Scoria is trying to prove his worth on the battlefield today. So he accepted the challenge from Gilliman, which he's quite happy to accept. He's wielding the Voidian Scepter. I've got four attacks, and I need fours to hit. Oh, not an amazing roll, so I've got two hits, but each hit causes D3 wounds. So we've only got um, three four. wounds, unfortunately. So Gilliman will need to take uh, his invulnerable with AP2. Four up invulnerables. Okay, Gilliman's failed one. This is the assault phase. I get to reroll my first failed invulnerable, which he fails as well. And then we've got five up, feel no pain as well. Hang on, the Vordian Scepter stops uh, feel no pain. Okay, so, so just... we failed that anyway. So Gilliman has taken a wound. So my apothecary striked. Um, he's got three attacks on the charge. Um, uh, a couple of hits, failed to do any wound damage as we'd expected. We're going to strike with the uh, sorry the suzerain now. They are two attacks base each. They are plus one for charging. Um, so there's 15 attacks coming in. Now, uh, I'm weapon skill five against David's weapon skill three. So I'm hitting on uh, threes. But any sixes to hit with my Legantine axes automatically cause a wound. I have a chaplain in there. Uh, so that's giving me reroll fail to hits on the charge as well. So let's see what we can do with these. Okay, so we have two, three, four that have automatically wounded. We have two, three, four that have hit, that I'll need to roll to wound with. These ones here that have missed, my chaplain allows me to re-roll. And as per usual, I don't really do much better, so I get one, two, ooh, squeeze that one out, three, those then go. So, we then have seven hits to roll to wound for. So I'm looking for sixes again, because I'm hitting big monstrous creatures. Uh, and we get nothing out of that. So David, you have four AP2 saves on your unit. Oh, this is not good. So the Castax have a six up and in combat. I need to save at least one of these or I lose some attacks. Or oh, I don't, and one Castax dies. However, he does explode on a six, which he doesn't. So one Castax removed. The Castlax gets a strike now at initiative four. So although I did lose a Castlax, he'll still get a strike before we remove him. I've got eight attacks. I hit on fours. So not amazing. So I only hit with four, unfortunately. They're strength three, sorry. Strength six AP two. I need twos to wound. That's a cock. Okay, so I've got two AP twos. Uh, and Tom, you've got some invulnerables now, haven't you? Yeah, so boarding shield gives me a five up in vulnerable in combat. And I've also got a five up feel no pain if I need it which I do, so let's go for five up, feel no pains. That is one suzerain removed. So my chaplain striking now with his Crozius. Uh, he's weapon skill five, so he's hitting on threes uh, and then wounding on fives. So all three hit. Uh, one wound, AP four. Okay, so only three up arm save for the Castellax and I take it, which is great. It's time for Gilliman to strike back then. So he is four attack space, plus one for charging, and plus one because he has two specialist weapons. Um, he is hitting on threes, wounding on twos. Um, so those two miss, those three miss, but he has got a chaplain on the charge. So one more hit. Now twos to wound. So we have three wounds with your invulnerable save, but no feel, no pain, because it's double your toughness. Okay, I was, get, I was quite worried about that, if I'm honest, but uh, I've got three up invulnerables. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, how many wounds does Scoria have? <laughs> That's awful. Um, Scoria is dead. He has four wounds. Oh, oh brutal.
How can you roll three ones? That's appalling. Brutal Bob Gilliman has come in and he's seen you and he's gone, sit down. Oh. Now, I still do get my initiative one. Yeah, attacks. you'll get your mash. Uh, is so, it your machinator array? Sure, sure, That's the one. Let's do that quickly. So I'll hit you on fours with those. Great. And is strength six? He's toughness six. So four, I think strength five, sorry. So yeah. fives to wounds, AP two, uh, nothing. But Scoria is dead. Right, stop. I made a mistake. It's completely my fault. Scoria has four wounds base and plus one for the abeyance. So he has five Thank wounds. Goodness. He had one lost originally. Gilliman caused three, so he's four. He's got one left. So, Tom, I'm really sorry about that. Oh, well. <laughs> we all got really excited here. I thought, oh, Scoria's dead. But um, Scoria has one wound left. But we stay in the challenge. We Gilliman's do. weapon skill goes up, and you're going to get fisted again. This is. Well, 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 we'll see. <laughs> End of uh, Ultramarines turn three, it was pretty good. Uh, we had some pretty good shooting. Combat went well. Um, robbed of an extra rune, I was sure there's some Dark Mechanicum uh, trickery going on there, but uh, looks like Scoria's sticking around for one more fight. So uh, let's move into the Mechanicum and see what they can do. Mechanicum turn three. Now with the excitement of Scoria, um, so things are getting a bit wild at the moment, but the Voltrax has come on uh, and I've brought him on as a jump monster creature and not flying so he can target the, the Storm Eagle. Um, Tom and I discussed it about whether he comes in, he gets Interceptor and anything else, and it's better if I come in as a jump monster creature and not a flyer. So we're going to resolve the Interceptor shooting now from the Doretto. So Tom, what have you got for us? So three shots from the missile launchers because the autocannons are not in range. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to fire the three missiles. So hitting on th uh, twos, all hit. Wounding on, it would normally be fours, but because it's got its magic flare shield all the way around, it's wounding on fives. So one wound at AP3. Cool, I can't do anything about that, so the Voltrax takes a wound. But more importantly, doesn't need that grounding check because he didn't come on uh, as a flyer, so that's great news. Movement for the rest of the turn. All they had was brought the Voltrax on, as you saw, and then the uh, Trios Armoured Conveyor moved forward six inches. I know it's a objective game and I've got a unit of 23 hours left in there, so uh, I'll perhaps need to decide what to do that later. Uh, the Thanatar stayed still, the other Trials is immobilised, the Castlax with Dark Fire have stayed in the building pretty stationary, uh, and next this turn for me for shooting is going to be um, it's going to be quite an important one. I need to start taking points now because of death toll uh, and everything else, so we'll see. Mechanicum turn three, shooting. The Castlax with Dark Fire have targeted the Rhino on my flank. The reason why I've gone for this is because it's a scoring game, War of Lies, and I need to get rid of scoring troops. So my plan is to pop the Rhino and then uh, plasma more to the troops inside. So I've hit with five shots from the Lance. I need four to glance, five to pen. <laughs> and unbelievably, they can't pop a rhino. So two whole points dealt out and that's all. So because of the appalling round of shooting from the Castlax with Dark Fire, I've had to change my options for the Voltrax. I was going to double shot him and go into the Storm Eagle, uh, but now I'm going to have to redirect the Voltrax into the rhino. So I have got three shots. I've not double shotted it. I need threes to hit. <laughs> Unbelievably. So I hit once. I need a two to five to glance, six to pen. And I do pen it, which is fantastic news. I can't explode it, so there's no point rolling. But the rhino's destroyed and the troops have to disembark. So after the Volterax blew the rhino, uh, the troops had to get out, which is great, which left them exposed for the, uh, for the Thanatar. The Thanatar fired his Helix Plasma Mortar. I hit, I uh, uh, scored seven hits, which is great with a Blast Marker. And now all I need is twos to kill. So no ones, please, which is great. So I missed with one, so six wins dealt out, great news. Turn three shooting uh, wasn't amazing for me. I had hoped uh, to, I had hoped that the Dark Fire would take a Rhino up, but clearly they didn't. But anyway, we did the ride in the end. It did deviate some, it did stop some shooting coming in at the Ultramarines, but hey, that's where it is. I did try and cast a Right of Fury from the Majos Dominus with a Dark Fire unit into the Castax unit in combat, but unfortunately failed the Cyberthurgy. That just would have increased the attacks by two, just to help out in that combat. Uh, but that's all the shooting for me. We now go into combat, and I think Scoria will definitely die this turn, so let's find out. Mm -hmm. 
Mechanicum, turn three assault phase. Scoria strikes first at initiative five with his Voidian Scepter. He's hitting Gilliman on fours. <laughs> He's not hitting Gilliman at all. Uh, and now we'll go to next initiative step. So the chaplain is going to strike back with his Crozius. Uh, no re-rolls this time because we only get that bonus on the charge. So we're looking for threes to hit, which he does. Uh, strength plus two. So I'm uh, wounding on fours. Look at that, that's terrible. That's disastrous dice, right? Wow. So you survive the chaplain's assault. Next up is the Castellax. Two attacks each, hitting on fours. Please be better than Scoria. They are, they've hit four times, which is fantastic news. And they're strength six AP two, so needing twos. <laughs> Double one, fantastic. So they cause two wounds. So two five up invulnerables. Oh, five up feel no pains. Oh no, two suzerain go down. So I've just done my apothecary's attacks because it's only two attacks. He's not likely to wound because he's only hitting uh, wounded on a six. So we're going to go into the shoes rain. No two of them have died. It's still initiative four, so they're going to swing back. So I've got four left. Um, hitting on threes. So we've got some auto wounds there. Some auto wounds there. We have missed with those ones. And we've got another hit tucked in there. So we want sixes to wound now. And that one needs to roll to wound as well. So two wounds, AP two. Okay, so I Castlax get a six up in vulnerable in combat, and I just take two wounds on one Castlax. First up is Scoria with his Machinator Array. Two extra attacks, I need force to hit. Come on, double six, this is a good start. Uh, it's strength six, toughness six, so I need force to wound with Shred, which is great news. So two AP two wounds for Gilman. Two four up invulnerables. Passes both. Oh, double six, very nice. So Gilliman's gonna get his power fist out now and have a go back. So I'm hitting on threes, wounding on twos. Uh, so two misses, and then twos to wound. <laughs> two wounds at AP one, Well, I have no feel, no pain. I have to say, I've been given the best possible chance. I need two three up saves to stay in the game. So can Scoria do it? He does! Oh. <laughs> Amazing news! This is fantastic news. Really pleased about that. Uh, and also, because it's my turn, I'll do my hit one not die now on camera quickly while we do that um, for a previous wound. So I need a five up, which I passed on a six. So um, that has averted a major crisis for the Mechanicum. Super pleased. Uh, and we go on to the Ultramarines. <laughs> Ultramarines turn four, starting off with the movement. Um, the guys from the Rhino have come out and they've they've come forward. Uh, we had a bit of a discussion about uh, charging out of blown up vehicles, but we worked our way through the rules and they're just gonna run forward there. Um, the Rhino over here that's been immobilized for two turns has uh, managed to unimmobilize itself and it's just done a sneaky, sneaky drive around in front of the Triaros just to basically be irritating and cause a roadblock. Um, the Rhino back there has backed up, um, just to, I'm starting to think, as David is starting to think about the end game, starting to think about uh, holding objectives at the end of the game. And the Dorado has elected to move this turn, so he won't be sky firing or intercepting next turn, but I've moved him forward to get his auto cannons in range of the Volterax down here, so we can hopefully uh, wing some more damage off the Volterax, and I'm gonna get three Volterax skulls on that Dorado. <laughs> Cool, so we're gonna start off with the Dorado, the Volterax Hunter. Um, we're gonna fire the auto cannons in first. So I'm hitting on twos. Uh, ooh, two misses. Uh, and then I'm wounding on uh, fours. Two wounds, AP four. Oh geez, all right, so the Volterax has a three up armor save. <laughs> oh! It's a double one, which is brilliant. Cool, so we're gonna go in with the missiles now. So uh, twos to hit, one miss. Uh, fives to wound, but AP three. One more wound at AP three. So the Voltrax has one wound left. Okay, I'm gonna try and take down a, the rest of the Voltrax with my uh, guys that have come out the Rhino in the corner there. So I'm hitting on fours. Oh dear, one hit. But because they're sniper, I'm wounding on fours with sixes being AP2. Nothing at all. The Rhino down there that's uh, unimmobilized itself, he's gonna take a pot shot with the uh, multi-melter into it. Hits, uh, strength eight, toughness seven, so threes to wound. 
Oh, Jesus. So my quad mortars have uh, targeted in on the uh, Volterax, uh, trying to bracket it with some serious fire. Uh, fired the frag shells because the shatter shells are out of range, so I'm only at strength 5 AP5. But uh, the first uh, quad mortar fired in, wild miss, you know, don't know where he's been, but he's going back to shooting practice. Second one managed to get four hits on the Volterax. Um, but I only converted one wound because I'm wounding on a six, so one three up armor save for you, or it's dead. Oh yeah, three up or he's dead. Oh, oh. he loves it. So end of uh, Ultramarine's turn four shooting, um, fired a lot more shots in here, failed to kill the Volterax, that was a bit of a pain, I really wanted to take that down this turn. Fired a load of blast, uh, the, the blast missiles from the Storm Eagle into the Darkfire Castellac, snap fire the Bolters, failed to do any wounds on it though. <laughs> Ultramarines turn for Assault Phase, uh, this unending battle with Gilliman and Scoria. Um, Gilliman's going to elect to use his Power Fist again, so he's going to go at Initiative 1. So we're going to start off uh, with Scoria, and the Chaplain are going to attack at Initiative 5, so let's roll it for Scoria. Okay, Scoria, you need to do a little better than you have done, so I need force to hit. Come on. Wow. Oh, again, another oh round near. of complete misses. Nasty. So Chaplain's going to attack back into the Castellax now, so threes to hit. I'm rolling just the same, so one hit, uh, strength plus two to six, so fours to wound, F fives to wound, sorry, uh, no wounds anyway. So my two remaining suzerain are going to attack into the Castellax, needing threes to hit. Uh, that was a one that fell off, so that's a miss. And then I need sixes to wound. No wounds. Great stuff. Okay, so let's hope that the uh, Castellax can do a little bit more than Scoria did. I've got four attacks, uh, sorry, six attacks. Needing force to hit, see so much better. I got four hits there, which is great. And I need twos to wound. Wow, so that's four AP two wounds. So we'll do two invulnerables on the cast, uh, the shoes rain to start with because they've got a five up, one save. So one feel no pain. No, nope, so one's gone down. Uh, I've got one more. Then I'll take on the suzerain before going to the chaplain because he's got a different invulnerable. Uh, so he fails his invulnerable, feel no pain. Nope, so that's both suzerain gone. And then one on the chaplain with a refractor field of five up. No, and then a feel no pain. No, so the chaplain takes a wound as well. We finished off initiative step four with my uh, chaplain. He actually managed to score a wound on a Castellax, but it was saved, no problem. So Gilliman's gonna go in the power fist, needing threes to hit. Nice. <laughs> and then he needs twos to wound. So you have four wounds at AP1. All oh, right, let's get this right this time. So Scory has five wounds in total. He's lost three, he's got two left. So I need to save these or my game goes seriously wrong. So I need three up, invulnerable. So I save three and I lose one wound, which is fantastic. Scory is left to strike now with his machinator array. He's hanging on in there. I need force to hit with the machinator array to hit once. And I wound on a four. It has shred. Okay, so we don't wound, but that's okay. So end of Ultramarine's turn four. Um, Gilliman's not got through uh, Scoria there. I'd have liked to have got out the back of that combat now. I'm um, starting to get worried. I've lost all my suzerain. I'm now left just with Gilliman and a chaplain and apothecary. That's not, not as great as it was. I knew it was always a dangerous gamble with the Legantine Axe having no positive strength, but uh, we'll keep going with that. We'll keep battling away. I now need to start manoeuvring for the end game, start thinking about uh, results at the end as well. Um, yeah, let's go into the Mechanicum turn four. Mechanicum movement turn four. Uh, I've been really lucky with Scorer, I think, so far, and he's really stuck in there. I, I need him to start hitting Gilliman now to cause some wounds. But my movement phase was very brief. Brief rather, I moved the Trios Armour Conveyor up, looking at um, objectives towards the end of the game. The Thanatar has moved over slightly. That does reduce his range now to 24 inches, but I need to take care of the troops in my backfield and maybe the odd rhino or two. Uh, the Volterax has gone into flying mode and he's flown over that side of the battlefield. My plan now is to double shot his, uh, his Haywire gun into the Storm Eagle and try and finish that off. Um, I say this every turn towards the end of the game, um, a critical turn, but uh, we'll find out. Mechanicum, turn four shooting. 
I started off with a Thanatar, it turned around and shot at the tactical squad, which was great. It took a load of Marines with it and they ended up falling back. Whilst they were falling back, the Thrall tucked away in the containers there, sniped a Marine down, which was great. So there was one Space Marine left in that squad. And then I had a tough decision to make. Does the Dark Fire shoot at the Storm Eagle or do I go for an easy point and take the tactical? I decided to go with the tactical. And as you can see, there's no Marines left on the board on that side. So I've protected my objective and scored another victory point through the death toll, which was a good decision, I think. I'm gonna start off with a Cyber 30 test. I'm gonna attempt Rite of Destruction on the Volterax to double shot the Haywire weapon. So it's a leadership nine with a minus one modifier, so I need eight or less, and I fail. So that is quite unfortunate. So we don't get the double shot this turn, but that's okay. We're gonna continue on shooting into the Storm Eagle. I need threes to hit, and I hit twice. So I don't get that third hit, unfortunately. Um, and what do I do? So two to glance, two to five glance, six to pen. So two glance, and Tom gets his jinx save. One drink. Okay, so only one goes through. Mechanicum, turn four assault phase. I'm just going to backtrack slightly. In the shooting phase, the Trial Summer Conveyor shot its Volkite Sentinels into the Rhino and caused a hole point, so it's just worth mentioning. But we'll go straight into combat now. Scoyer is attacking. I hope to hell I get some hits this time. I'm going to be very, very upset. I need force to hit. Oh well, two's better than none, I guess. And so each hit with Avoiding Scepter causes D3 wounds. Let's hope for some sixes. Okay, so we've got three, we've got five wounds dealt out onto Gilliman. So five, four up invulnerables. And there, so he fails one. Get to re-roll that one for his armour. Which he fails. Uh, five up, feel no pain. Yeah, you don't get a feel no don't pain. Get, don't get the Voidian Scepter, so he does take a wound. Great news. It's two wounds for Gilliman. Right, the chaplain's going to attack back now. So two attacks for him, hitting on um, threes. So one hit, and five to wound. One wound. Woo. So I get three up armor save. Oh, Ooh. it's a, it's a Whizzler. Oh! oh <laughs> wow. Okay, we'll do that again. Oh, Castlax takes a wound. Next up is the Castlax. I'm really hoping I can kill the two extra uh, models in this unit. I need force to hit. Yeah, not so bad. So I've got four hits and it's strength six, AP two. Really good. So four AP two wounds. One wound on my chaplain, five up invulnerable. No, five up feel no pain. Nope, so the chaplain's gone down. So feel no pain on the apothecary. No, he fails. So that leaves us with Two wounds on Gilliman, uh, so he gets his four up invulnerable, uh, which he passes both. Next up is Scoria's Machinator Ray, uh, striking initiative one, hitting on fours. Hits once, which is great. And I wound on fours with Shred. With Shred. Oh, okay, so nothing. And now it's time for Gilliman himself. Yeah, so hitting on threes. He uh, misses three times. Uh, wounding on twos. Oh, only the one wound. Well, I mean, this is the last final wound for Scoria. Let's get this right. I need a three up or Scoria is dead. And it's oh. a four. He hangs in for another turn. Fantastic news. Ultramarines turn five. Uh, movement phase to start with. Bit of tactical manoeuvring now. Starting to think about the end game. The Rhinos crash back up onto the uh, Shattered Aquila there to get side art with its multi-melter on. To be honest, I probably made a bit of a boo-boo last turn moving it. I don't really know why I did that, but there we go. A uh, bit of Ultramarines uh, tacticals. Uh, the Storm Eagle has just shuffled around. It's going to get some shots off into the Thanatar now. Um, I'm mainly, I can't fire the, the big blast site close to my Rhino down there. Um, I don't want to shell my own self. The other rhinos moved up onto the rocks there. Again, looking at that objective, uh, starting to time to think, you know, uh, tactically towards the end. So the Rado stayed still, giving it sky fire again. Uh, so I'm hopefully going to take this Volterax down. I want three Volterax skulls in one game. I'm going for it. Ultramarines turn five shooting, uh, starting off with some shots from the uh, Rhino into the side of the Triaras, did another hull point, shook it again so it's snap firing. Uh, fired the large blast missiles off the Storm Eagle into the Thanatar. Um, 
didn't do any wounds, you know, it was a bit of a lucky shot anyway, trying to just to pop some shots. Uh, gonna move on to the Drado and let's see if we can get that third Thanat uh, Volterax skull. We're gonna start off with the auto cannons from the um, Dorado into the uh, Volterax. So hitting on twos. So all hit, strength seven, uh, toughness effectively seven because of the uh, flare shield, so we want fours to wound. Uh, so two wounds uh, at AP4. Okay, so I need three up armor. Could die though. Oh, he's all right. So we're going to fire the heavy bolters next. Uh, hitting on twos, twin linked. Uh, all hits. They're only strength five though, so I need sixes to wound. No wounds there. So then we're going to go on to the missile launchers then. Uh, again, twos to hit. Those have all hit. Strength six, so fives to wound. Two wounds at AP3, but you've got your jinx saves. I've got my jinx saves, so I need four ups or he's dead. Oh! oh! Finishing off Ultramarines turn five shooting. Uh, the quad mortars fired their frag shells into the Thanatar. They're lacking a target really now, um, but so they're just popping shots into the Thanatar. Um, failed to do any wounds with the frag shells. Uh, the guys in the Rhino decided to pop the hatch on the top. They took some pot shots at the um, Volterax. They did uh, manage to hit it, but failed to wound it. Uh, and the Rhino, with its combi bolter and multi matter, flung some shots at it as well. Uh, again, failed to wound it. So assault phase, Ultramarines turn five. Gilliman again is electing to go for his power fist into Scoria. So um, Castellax are gonna, uh, sorry, no, uh, Scoria is gonna attack at initiative five first. Right, let's see if the Voidian Scepter can actually do something this turn. I need fours to hit. That's not bad, that's three hits. We need that for the next roll. And then each hit causes D3 wounds. Okay, not bad, so that's six wounds dealt out at AP2. So six invulnerable saves. I can reroll one failed. So that is four, five wounds done to Gilliman. He is dead. Oh, you beauty. <laughs> Scoria does the magic, finally. Good news. Rubbish. <laughs> So the tide of battle has swung, uh, Gilliman has fallen, and uh, uh, Scoria after a long drawn out protracted battle. Um, it's only the second time he's been killed so far, so fair play Dave, that's pretty good going. Um, oh, but I've been in a bad situation now because Scoria's on the loose. My, my scoring units are a bit vulnerable now, so I'm going to have to start thinking on the defensives. It may have to be a tactical withdrawal now. Um, yeah, pretty scary. Um, luckily, the way the Ultramarines work, uh, I don't give up a victory point because he's not an HQ choice and there's no price of failure in this mission as well according to the rulebook, so I don't give up. I don't lose too many victory points there. I had to take a pinning test for everything with Legion Astartes, but luckily I passed all those. I was okay. Mechanicum turn five, movement phase. Obviously really good that it took out Gilliman, I'm really pleased about that. He was, I honestly thought Scorius was just going to die, but uh, Scorius regained and he did, he did well. So my movement phase for this turn, I'm now thinking about the end of the game. I need kill points, I need objectives. The Trios Armour Conveyor has moved up to potentially capture that objective on the last turn with some Thrals. The Thanatar has stayed still. Scoria has moved forward and I'm going to shoot and charge the Storm Eagle and hopefully we'll get uh, we'll get a victory point for taking that out. The Volterax has moved over the Rhino. Uh, he is snap shooting but I'm going to try and double shot his arc rifle and uh, so he should get six shots and I'll be snap shooting so hitting on sixes I've got a reasonable chance of taking the Rhino and then if not I'll follow it up with some dark fire followed by a Thanatar shot for the contents. So if we get lucky we should have it in the bag this turn. We'll see. Mechanicum, turn five, shooting. So the Majos Dominus detached in the movement phase from the Castax with Dark Fire. He's getting ready to shoot and charge the Rhino. Uh, I unfortunately rolled a one for the Infernus pistol, which is a real shame. So he didn't manage to do the Rhino there. Next up was the Trios Armor Conveyor. Uh, shot at the Storm Eagle, but couldn't uh, couldn't glance him on a six, unfortunately. Uh, I then cast Rite of Destruction from Scoria onto the Volterax. I passed, so I've now got six Haywire shots into the Storm Eagle, but um, because I jinxed the previous turn, I need sixes, so wish me luck. So we got one six, unfortunately, but it's better than nothing. And uh, two to five glance, six pen. <laughs> we rolled a one. <laughs> 
fantastic. Scoria and his unit will hopefully succeed where the Voltrex failed, which is uh, absolutely beyond me, but anyway. Uh, so Scoria has a Photon Thruster. He's Ballistic Skill 5, so hitting on twos. And it is Get Hot, so does Scoria take the wound for getting hot? And he doesn't, which is good. But I do get a hit, uh, and I need a six to glance, which I don't, that's fine. And then I shall shoot the three Castlax with Mauler Bolt Cannons, hitting on threes. Not amazing. So we've got two, four, five hits, sixes to glance. Ooh, three glances, so it's enough to do it, but Tom needs his Jinx saves. Four up Jinx, make two, oh. so it takes a whole point. It's wow. down to one That's whole it's... point left. Unbelievable, it looks like I'm gonna have to charge it with the Castellax unit and the uh, Scoria. The Castellax with a dark fire shot at the Rhino, and finally taking Rhinos out, which is good news. Uh, I just wrecked it, glanced it to death, which is good. The Ultramarines had to um, had to disembark, and now I plan on putting a Thanatar shot right down onto that tactical unit. The Thanatar with the Helix Plasma Water did target the Ultramarines that have just emergency disembarked from the Rhino, but unfortunately I couldn't see them, and therefore the shot scattered wide and they are untouched, which is really unfortunate. So we'll go into the assault phase and see if we can score some points. <laughs> Mechanicum, turn five, assault phase. It went pretty well. Um, the only thing I was a little bit disappointed was that the, uh, the Majos Dominus, who was two inches away from the Rhino, uh, he's in cover and he rolled a double one. So I also couldn't get in to the combat there. And that Machinator A would have done that Rhino, I'm quite confident. Uh, but hey, that's the way it goes, I guess. Uh, Scoria and his unit charged the Storm Eagle. Uh, and the Voidian Scepter from Scoria just uh, ripped it apart with four hull points. So I was really pleased with that. It scores me a victory point. Uh, you know, we're, we're closing into the end of the game now. I'm in a relatively strong position, but playing War of Lies, I'm really conscious that, you know, you can work so hard getting all the death toll points and Warlord and everything else. And then when you capture objectives at the end of the game, you could potentially lose up to three victory points. You know, it's, it's minus D3. And, so I might have a little count up at the end of my next turn and just see whether it's actually worth going for the victory points or not. I know it sounds a little bit beardy, but you know, when a game's at stake, but uh, we'll have a look. Uh, but Tom's up next, so we'll see what he does. So Ultramarines turn six, it is now the end game. It's time to start thinking about how we can maximise the potential of this game. It's, it's swung, turn five, uh, it's been pretty brutal for me. Turn four, losing Gilliman, it, it's got pretty hardcore now. I need to start maximising what I do and take some gambles. So the Rhino hiding up in the lines here. He's just stayed there. I'm going to try and plink the last hole point off the Triaros, get a victory point. I'm probably going to lose it in turn six. So that hopefully will neutralise the cost there. Uh, the veteran squad there has spread out because they know they're getting a plasma mortar on their head. So they're spreading out. Um, they're going to see what we can do with some shooting there. The Dorado is still gunning for that Voltorax skull. Uh, so he's holding his ground. He's going to fire a whole load of shots in there. The Valiant Quad Mortar crewman that's left over is valiantly retreating and hiding behind a rock. Just basically, I've got to keep him alive to deny Dave a victory point. So Ultramarines turn six shooting. Uh, the Rhino decided to plink shots into the side of the uh, Triaros and has finally stopped it by melting a hole into the engine block. Uh, took the last hole point off there with the multi-melter. The Veterans, uh, they got out their Rhino, they decided to pop some shots at the um, uh, Voltorax didn't affect anything, but maybe a couple of lucky rending with shots with the uh, Boltless could have done it some damage. So we're going to move on to the Dorado shots. So starting with the auto cannons, hitting on twos. That is four hits. Strength seven, toughness effectively seven with the, void, uh, the flare shield. We have scored two wounds, AP four, so two three up armor saves for you. Okay, here we go. Oh, and he is dead. He's gone down. The Dorado takes the third skull. So, Volterax, everyone worried about Volterax out there? Go and buy yourself some Dorado Dreadnoughts. <laughs> so, the final bit of shooting for us, uh, Ultramarines to turn six. The Quad Mortars fired as a pair, uh, working together with some really good Ultramarines tactics. The first one fired its shatter shells into the side arc of the Triaros, blew it up. The Thralls had to pile out of all the holes of the shattered remains of it. And brutally then the second quad mortar fired with its uh, frag shells. Uh, took out a whole swathe of the ones on the side with the objective, leaving the Thralls over the other side 
there with, you know, they're going to have to march there, have to get through cover, hopefully denying David that the, the, the easy choice of that objective, meaning he might have to do something a bit different in that turn. So no assault phase from me for turn six, because uh, I've got nothing in range to charge. So that's the end of my turn. And let's move into the final turn. Let's see what David can do in turn six with the Mechanicum. <laughs> Mechanicum turn six, final turn. I'm quite keen to kill the veterans now. I'm going to plough my whole army into taking that squad out because if I do, it's uh, some extra victory points for me. I'm in two minds about whether I want to capture objectives or not, but it's the spirit of the game, so the Thrall's going to run towards the objectives and hopefully hold them. Um, but yeah, we need, a, we need a successful shooting phase, so we'll see. Mechanicum, turn six shooting phase. Not a bad shooting phase, but not amazing. So I double shot the Thanatar to get a double tap on the tactical unit behind the Rhino there. Um, one complete scattered and missed, and the other one took out four Marines or so. Uh, then the Castlex with Dark Fire Cannon came in, scored three hits, uh, sorry, scored three wounds on Tactical Squad, so took more off. Uh, the Majos Dominus with his Machinator Ray fired the Infernus pistol inside of the Rhino and finally took him out, so that's a finally another victory point. And then lastly, Scoria and his unit fired into the Tactical Squad, killed everyone to a man. And unfortunately, the way the Ultramarine model there is deployed, I just couldn't take him off. And so the Ultramarines have still scored that unit, which is a, a great play. So that is the end of the game. There's a lot of victory points up for grabs here. There's a lot of death. And we're not sure what's happened, so we are going to top those points up uh, and get back to you at the front. But before we do that, Tom. Well done, Dave. That was great fun. I really enjoyed that. Excellent game. I, I think you'd agree. A couple of games we've had in the past, they've, they've been one-sided quite quickly, but this one has gone right to the wire. Mm. So... I think it went away from me maybe turn five, six, but I think I gave you turn three and four, you were really worried, so yeah. it's definitely swung back and forth, hasn't it? So it's been a really good, fun game. Cool. Well, we're going to do those points and get back to you. Here we are. Game's over. All finished. Oh, victory <laughs> points. It was, a bit of a, it was a bit of a good one. So final scores were Ultramarines, seven, and the Mechanicum were 19, so that's pretty, uh, that's not bad, not bad at all. When we rolled for the War of Lies business for the D6 and all that, or minus D3 or whatever, I rolled a 1 and a 5, I think, so I got an additional D3, I think, didn't additional I? Additional 3. 3, that's You got it. the best results, I yeah, did. and I rolled a flat 1 and, and took nothing. Yeah, but uh, as I said to you when we were inside the booth, you know, it, you go for death toll because that racks your points up and then if you get those negative mm. D3 it could reduce your points down but in the end I was fairly lucky so it wasn't a bad result. Uh, so Tom give me your give me your thoughts. Yeah it was a, a really good tight game I think. It, it was. It, I think actually the victory points don't reflect how tight we felt it was. We really no. felt at the end of turn six it was like Oh, this might be a point or two, <laughs> innit? When we started going through and working out what I've got, my army has quite a lot of multiple small units, so on death toll, Gilliman's unit gives away four, because yeah. you've got um, Gilliman, um, Suzerain, the Apothecary, and the Chaplain all giving one away. Yeah. Then you get two for price of failure, so Gillum, that, that unit gave you gave up six victory points for losing that unit, so it's a big you know, big chunk of points out on that one. So it, it, I, I do play by the method of go big or go home. There was no way, I mean, I could have floated Gilliman around and avoided Scoria, maybe put him in the thralls and denied your scoring units, but we wanted to see that. Gilliman's gonna go and take on Scoria. He's got a reputation <laughs> and it's gotta be tested. We gotta put his rep to the test. So yeah, it was a really, a, Really good fun game. There was a narrative, you know, it definitely felt like a raiding force. We hit hard, yep. we pushed your lines back, the Mechanicum were resilient, and they mm. drove us back out of their city, and it was time to fall back and start rethinking the plan. We we probed the Mechanicum's defenses, it's time to go and get the Phosphex out yep. and start annihilating people. The Orbital bombardment. <laughs> there was a couple of things in that game which really stood out for me. Uh, the Volterax for me, Oh, they're a new unit and there's a lot of fear surrounding them that they're super tough but I, I genuinely don't think they are and I, they certainly didn't perform how I envisaged them that they mm. would so for me they were a bit of a letdown uh, you know you, you did really well I mean this Doretto just munched them I it? mean I think I think any any uh, any player who's going to play Volt Racks now is yeah. any Legion player is going to go out and buy some Dorados you know it, 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 
I shot well, I rolled well, mm. you were unlucky. The the grounding test really kept you honest because yeah. it also when your your third volt fracture came on you suddenly started thinking I can't risk losing a wound to grounding yeah. and it manipulated how you for it forced you into a certain style of pl style of play. So mm. good anti air will deal with volt fracture. You know, yeah, I mean pff, you're not your twin Keres mortis at short range. It's not going to do it's the job. Twenty four inch, isn't it? We, our club, has been talking about you know the the points efficiency. The twin carries is kind of the go to anti air sure. from Indonesia. It's too short range. You can't move it. Uh, we actually looked at the Legion mortis at the box right. dread because it got two auto cannons as well. and It gives you the range, and I decided to go for the Dorado, adding the missiles on top for thirty five points. Yeah, to yeah. Just suddenly start popping. I mean. The, the the thing I think that really broke the Volfrax was it fired its guns at one, mm. took it down and went, I've got missiles, yeah, yeah. pivoted, hit the other one with missiles then, and suddenly it was like, I've taken two units yeah. out for the for one unit shooting. I mean, that those really missiles great. on the top are, are, are really key. They were really handy. So, yeah, the, the Dorado has come out. He has a reputation for being a bit of a beast. He, he he's he either gets destroyed straight away or he starts taking things down and I'm going to have to find some suitable kill markings to mark three Volterac <laughs> yeah, three Volterac skulls on the side of him so yeah Dorado definitely my man of the match he did really well uh, and the other one for me is Scoria I, I think if I hadn't rolled so many invulnerables I think you would have killed him all dim quite early on mm, in the game Yeah, and I was really lucky as well to get a couple of it will not dies you know you brought him right mm. up to four wounds and then I got him back to mm. two at the end of the game uh, uh, and the, you know, missing what was it two, three rounds of combat, not hitting a single thing yeah. with that Voidian scepter. Yeah. For me, that was just huge, absolutely huge. Yeah. But in the end, he finally came good and swung and got some good wounds on him. But tricky. That was really tricky for me. He he is a beast. He is an utter beast. I mean, the argument of should he be a Lord of War? Maybe. <sighs> I don't know. I, 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 yeah, no mechanic and player is ever going to no, say he does. Not. You know, but uh, we, we had some discussion around his rules. They're strong. They're really strong. I don't think they're busted. No. I think he's really powerful. But you're lacking delivery methods for him. Assault vehicles, fast-moving assault vehicles. Yeah. I came to you to get that fight on. I mean, yeah. we were discussing that maybe if I was being strictly tactical, I'd have kept Gilliman away. I'd have chopped the thralls down, used his combat power sure. on soft targets. But who wants to see that? We all came out here today to see Gilliman and Scoria yeah. go toe to toe, and four, three, four rounds of combat, absolutely brutal. Gilliman swinging that power fist everywhere while his suzerain are falling around him, yeah. and and then there's just that last turn of just, boom, ah, oh, four failed invulnerables. Down he goes. You know, Gilliman fell at the end. It, it was a brilliant game. Loved it. Loads of good narrative. Loads yeah. of good theme. You know, loads of uh, thinking about what we could do, and then thinking about what would actually we want to do, and not just being determined by what's going to win me the game. Sure, but being determined by what's going to be fun. Yeah, Let's have yeah. some fun with this game. But I hope you guys at home really enjoyed the game. I just again want to thank Tom to say, you know, thanks for coming all the way from Cheltenham yeah. to come and see us. And, and I think you're going to talk a little bit about Incon Gaming and Geno 52. Yeah, and... yeah, I'm going to do a bit of shameless plug in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're a community podcast, we're a community Horace Heresy podcast. Our, me our aim is to talk about hobby and community. We want to build a community in the country. It basically mm. came from the fact we looked at the Australians and they have an amazing scene where they travel all over the country, they all go and see each other, they all hang out, they go to big events, they love playing together. You know, that's that, that, that's what what really makes their scene great and we yeah. were like right let's go out there and let's try and push it not saying that we didn't have it I'm saying it wasn't as connected in the UK we have good scenes in lots of places let's try and mesh them together which is why I wanted to come up and see David I'm going to go and meet the Peterborough guys a few of them are coming to no retreat with us as yeah. well which by this time this is out will happen yeah you know it's about mixing the scenes up let's let's get talking to each other we want you coming to our events we yeah. want to go to your events you know let, let, let's get this country rocking and a you know real good strong heresy scene so you can check us out on iTunes have a search for Geno 52 podcast we're on SoundCloud, we're on Stitcher, we're on Google Play, we're all the places you like. Just search for Geno52 Podcast. Uh, if you come to our Facebook page, give us a like. All the information on where you can find us is on there. Um, come and join our Facebook group as well. The page is mainly us pushing information to you. Uh, the, pay, the, the group then is a better community forum where we can all talk, share models, sure. we'll post all the stuff in there. Uh, we run events. Our latest one, Tarsis 4, has sold out in three hours, which was insane. It's mm. going to be an absolute nightmare of chaos-driven narrative. To I'm going to. I found all the second edition cards from an old set, and I've got so many crazy ideas for stuff going on. It's going to be really fun, all about the fun weekend party. We post all the information about stuff like that in there, so that's the best place to find stuff there. Cool. Uh, we're on the Twitter. Stu runs our Twitter 
mainly. Uh, my co-host, uh, I post some bits on there every now and again, but he's on there, he does a lot of Twitter work. We've got Instagram, we actually find Instagram's our biggest social media place we tend to find, it's, it's really good. We like to post a lot of models. Uh, Stu is a commission painter, I'm a keen amateur painter. Um, I, I throw paint at the wall and something sticks, basically. Um, <laughs> So we, you know, we, we do a lot of stuff in visual medium there. So um, come and see us on that. Uh, give us a like and a follow. We like to post stuff. We like to see stuff. Um, yeah, just basically search for Gino Five Two in most places. You'll find us and come and check us out and give us a listen. But thanks very much, Dave, for having us up. My uh, pleasure. It's been really great fun. Love coming up and doing it. Uh, I'm going to go home and I'm going to go and dig, dig Gillum in a grave now. <laughs> we'll come give you a hand if you want. Some services <laughs> down, give you a hand. But again, I hope you guys loved it. You know, please go to the Facebook page for for the uh, the 30k channel. We're on Instagram, and uh, we will see you in the next battle report. <laughs>